Four-wheel track. Amaru Park for the Goodbye Amaru Park race meeting, and this is the last race of the day, the last race meeting for Amaru Park Raceway. And uh, what we've done is put on a butcher's picnic. We went back and had a look at the programs for the very first races at Amaru, and that's how they ran them. They got the three cars out of each of the races and uh, put them in what's called the butcher's picnic. So we've got the top three Bendix J or Group N cars, and the top three club cars and the top three Porsches and sports cars, and everyone goes into the last race. And guess what's on pole? David Krause in an EH Holden against Rockcott's four-wheel drive twin turbo Porsche. Now we get to see sports cars versus sports sedans. The Porsche gets the lead. The sports cars are second. We've got sports sedans and club cars. Colin Bond, my co-commentator, what do you think about this for the last race at Amaru Park? Oh, it's going to be great, actually, Chris. I mean, there was... The Porsche had to be the first up the hill, didn't you? I mean, Ray Lintot's four-wheel drive, twin turbo charge. They set their power down to get going. Rod, I mean, Krauss, of course, you know, David, I should say, yeah, Chris in the EH. Even though he's probably April doing the same lap times, it certainly wouldn't get off the line as well as the Porsche. And that's what we've actually got. We've got the Porsche in front, Krauss behind, obviously trying to pressure these guys to get through. And he obviously wants to get through because there'd be nothing better, I think, he'd love to win the last race, as would Ray Lintot or anybody else. But an H being a Porsche, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> <laughs> it might be, depend on, uh, on who you were. But uh, Ray Lintot out in the lead. Ray is a uh, car dealer in, uh, in Sydney. And uh, his business actually sponsored this race. He's got uh, Wagon Wheels is one of the businesses that he has. And Ray's been kind enough to uh, be one of the sponsors putting up some trophies for this event. And uh, he's in the lead, so I guess uh, that's one way car dealer finds Oh, no. Oh, Krause has thrown it away. Swaps ends as he crossed, uh, crests the hill. I can't believe it. Krause in the EH was going so well, had pole position, and has just looped it in Dunlop Loop. Yeah, what he tried to do that ink actually, Chris, he, he tried to duck down the inside, which you can do between the two corners, but he just got a little bit enthusiastic a bit too early, put the power on, and the car just got a little bit loose at the back, spun. He did a good job actually stopping the car, nobody hit him, so he's back going again. I'm sure he'll catch up places, but the trouble was that the guys up in front are lapping more or less the same time what he was doing, so it's going to be hard for him to catch them up. You know, from being so far back now, but yeah. I'm sure he's going to try. And here's a great shot. Now, this is sort of taken from inside the car, looking, going over the hill. The road goes left, and then they go into the right spot. Um, from Stan's car, of course. The other Porsche now coming second. Yep, Stan Adler uh, been around for a long time. Used to race. Uh, actually, I think he might even still have the hill climb record here at Amaru Park. Oh. Used to race in an EH Holden, FJ Holden, way back in the early days, back at Oran Park, when they used to have. Uh, some pretty fierce sports today in action out there. And uh, Amaru Park obviously is a place that Stan loves to race at. He's running second. And again, looking at the different sorts of cars, you can really make some comparisons. It's uh, Krause here. Now let's see, uh, uh, going now, look at the, what's this? Uh, That's an MG, MGB. I think. It's a V8. It doesn't, you know, I think it's got an aluminium wave type motor in it. Um, quite unusual, actually, doesn't it? Why not put it in the of put a bit in it, but... Um, <laughs> Here at um, Asmoda Car, obviously the MGB has been around for a long time and, and there's all different sorts. There's sports cars, there's marine cars, there's a Commodore coming up behind this one and uh, an obvious Porsche that in front. Yeah, and you've got the, uh, that Commodore that we're looking at there is Bill Harris. I think it has a Chrysler motor. It's got a Valiant engine, Gee. believe it or not. <laughs> body, uh, we see some wonderful combinations. We've got MGB V8 versus uh, Commodore to, uh, power supplied by Chrysler. So uh, some unbelievably interesting combinations. You don't normally get it. That's why Butcher's Picnic used to be the last race of the day where you get everything in together and make some very interesting comparisons. And uh, looking at the, uh, the big Falcon Sprint here, which is the Group N category, and they run as they were run back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, with a couple of minis behind it. So we've got all sorts of things here. And looking at those minis, they look like they're dragging on the ground, don't they? They're that low at the back. You know, obviously trying to... Uh, minis used to readily understeer, then go mad oversteer. Obviously, with uh, the development of the cars over the years, they're making them handle very nicely, and it's surprising to see a Mini sort of staying up with some of the bigger cars. But this was, uh, sorry, not unusual these days, but in the old days, you know, you get a Mustang and a Mini, you're capable of doing the same lap times around a track, but they did it completely in utterly different ways, of course. Oh, yeah, that, that is one thing that brings out really good racing, too, because they've got advantages at different places on the track. At certain points, they're actually back together again, and uh, it, again, this little mini dragging his backside on the ground. I think they've got some big <laughs> wheels on the back, little ones, uh, sorry, some big ones on the front, little ones on the back. Going back in car with Stan Adler in the uh, 
911 Porsche. Performance 911 is his business. He's exercising a fair bit of performance, trying to get a run onto the straight here. Stan's got a lot of experience in uh, in uh, motor racing and certainly uh, Porsche Cup and Porsche racing over the last few years. And uh, he really is uh, getting into it up here. Very quick up the crest of the hill too, Colin Bond. Sure. Well, here we're going. There's another take manoeuvre Harris is trying to get through. I mean, he locked the brake last time through. He's not really in the right spot, though. He's probably going to come across a... I think it was a bit nooky, actually. He sort of came over to take the apex of the corner. <laughs> the poor old MG was there. They didn't touch. He spun. He's now trying to start again and get going. But a good manoeuvre. I was watching this car before. This is the... Uh, Falcon sprint. Big Falcon sprint. Yeah. There's a big black line of rubber coming onto the straight every time. There it goes again. And it's because I think it's got a lot of horsepower, obviously, and they're running very small wheels and tyres on the back, possibly like race tyres as well. And, um, you know, it must be a handful to drive, but he drives it very well. I was watching him in one of the other races, actually. Yeah, he did a, a fantastic job in that, mm. that Group N race where we mm. saw earlier on. And uh, he's travelled all the way from, from Adelaide, said he wouldn't miss it for anything. It took a little bit of convincing to in with it. Once he uh, managed to come across or decided to make the trip, he's had an absolute ball. And uh, it's not too many chances that you get to drive uh, on a racetrack that uh, in, uh, in another week or so's time will become housing development. It's a great shame, but uh, it's surprising that a lot more people didn't take advantage of being able to drive around here on the, the last occasion. And as I this is the Butcher's Picnic. It is the last race of the day on the last race day ever <laughs> at Amaru Park. And that, that big falcon, the way he the gate, flicked the tail around in front of the Alpha. These guys at the Alphas would have to be very brave to try and make a move on it, Bob. Well, that's Andrew Papalopoulos here. He must be the first Alpha, though, so he's probably out of all the categories, probably leading the Alpha. And this is one in front of all this that we haven't seen. But, uh, no, he's sitting behind it, and you'll see that he'll catch him going around the corner. But when it gets to the straight, and puts his power down, it's fantastic. As you can see in the afternoon now, too, the sun just coming over. And it's always been a problem at Amaru, hasn't it, Chris? You know, when you're racing a nice race, going up the hill, the sun does come through and sometimes makes the vision very hard to see. Yeah, the biggest problem, too, is um, a lot of the windscreens get peppered with, with fine grit and gravel. It's not, certainly ones that I have uh, ever driven usually are, because <laughs> we don't replace the windscreen too often. And... Uh, Usually find they get peppered and, and they're sandblasted and it's like we're trying to look through a, 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 a steamy window because as soon as the light hits at an angle, the whole thing turns white and you're better off looking out the side window to try and work out whether you're still going up the right part of the track or not. These little minis, they're getting a really good run of the straight. These guys are getting right into it side by side, up through the crest. I'll tell you what, this thing's low at the front. I don't know if there's any gap under it. You wouldn't want to hit a big rock or anything and flip end over end, I think. Right? They look like their, their minis on steroids or something, don't they? The way they've got their mudguards flared and you know, the bonnet scoops and what have you on it. But, uh, you know, minis have been around for a long, long time, of course. You know, and these ones will be very highly modified now, considering the years they've been able to do it. You see Ray there, the inside and the Porsche coming through. When they back off, you get the flames out the back. It's a sort of a typical turbo problem isn't it you know sometimes you get the unburnt gases coming through and it just flames out it doesn't do anything it just looks great but uh, I think Ray's sort of uh, with his lights on obviously lapping all these cars now and coming up on the two Alphas and the and the big Falcon but uh, you know you'll sort of see the difference in here you've got a four-wheel drive motor car very good tyres on it you know plenty of performance probably 500 horsepower can just pick his way past the cars at will and uh, he's not being pressured and he must almost be on his last lap or, or one to go. Yeah, at this stage coming up through the, the trick, this is definitely on his last lap coming up through the, uh, and this will be an interesting comparison, let's see the Porsche that has the, the drag with the big Falcon sprint whole traffic over the line, over the chequered flag and we've got, it looks like Arthur Hayes, uh, waving the chequered flag as a matter of interest, that is uh, member number one mm. of the ARDC and uh, what a fitting tribute to have Arthur waving the chequered flag for the last time here at Amaru Park with Ray Lintott taking a win and Stan Adler in second place and uh, these guys are really going to have a few tears in their eyes when they uh, come back to the pits after this event. I'd like to thank the ARDC for being such a wonderful club. I've been a member as I said earlier for about I don't know 35 years since I was a school kid living in Wagga, New South Wales and uh, I think it's fantastic. All the organisers, all the crew, all the flaggies, all the corner workers you know, all the officials are just fantastic. It's a great day, great atmosphere. Just driving around there in that last lap was just the best atmosphere I've ever had, including five 24-hour races overseas. Um, yeah, just lost track. Yeah, that would be right.